Um, I want to say this is Paul Feinbaum talking about the AJC's article. He was on a podcast, a YouTube show. ESPN is very clearly getting into the YouTube space so much so that Matthew Barry and Paul Feinbaum did a 30 minute YouTube like hangout. They were just talking. They were just talking football in which Paul Feinbaum was asked about the media coverage, which with, with which has been going on in the Georgia space as of late. Um, for those of you who don't know, you're about to get a history lesson on Paul Feinbaum. He has a little something we call bona fides when it comes to investigative journalism. This is a dude who got his career start as an investigative journalist out of the Birmingham area. So this is a well-versed, obviously, as you know, it's a legend in the media space. This is by definition an old head. This is an OG. This is a, a, a dude that nine times out of 10 kind of capes for traditional media as you would expect him to do so. So when you're listening to this, understand that this is a dude who has made a career out of always standing and backing the journal, right? The journalist. Always, always, always. This sound comes courtesy of the ESPN College Football Show on YouTube. I hope they don't pull us for even showing it, um, but I want to show it. Here we go. Having been an investigative reporter in my early days, uh, I say this now, uh, you can pretty much create whatever you want as long as uh, you have a little bit of, of, of a little bit of news to work on. And, and, and I think in some ways that's the case. You, you have a lot of players who have been on the fringe of trouble and the uh, medium person, the, the media entity in question here is the Atlanta Journal-Constitution which used to be an outstanding newspaper. I don't know what it is anymore because there are no such things as newspapers outside of New York and, and, and Washington and a few other places. And uh, it's fascinating uh, just to watch this battle between fans and, and the AJC. And, and I don't really know, I, I would normally take the media side, but I'm, I'm skeptical of the media these days as well, Matt, because they, they are fighting for their own survival. I mean, I just literally read uh, a tweet as we were coming on the air here. Yeah, uh, that the, the New, New York, York Times, Times yeah. is, uh, is getting rid of its sports staff. Uh, well, I mean, they, they they also own the athletic, but I mean, the New York Times, uh, you know, using uh, another entity to cover sports is uh, there, there's no such thing as whatever it, whatever it used to be is no longer. All right, so a lot to address right there. First of all, I want to talk about how he. He gave his credos, right? He gave his bona fides. I have been an investigative journalist. In fact, I mean, not that you need to know this, but Paul Feinbaum actually has a political science degree from the University of Tennessee. So this is a very well-educated man. One of his first beats was on an investigative beat. He understands how the investigative journalist track works. And did you hear him say, quote, you can kind of do, or you can pretty much create whatever you want. As long as you got a little thread you can kind of weave whatever you want as an investigative journalist. He tells you this with firsthand experience. And then he goes on to say, the AJC, quote, which used to be an outstanding newspaper, but I don't really know what it is anymore. He would go on to allude that newspapers that are now still holding on are things of like basically holding on, like doing drastic measures just to do so, right? The uh, newspapers that are still around are newspapers that are kind of getting sensationalized right? In order to get clicks, in order to get attention, in order to pay their bills. That's me paraphrasing. That's essentially what he just told you. The New York Times just got released. Now, again, like he said, the New York Times has recently bought, purchased The Athletic. So why necessarily need a, you don't necessarily need a sports division if you have The Athletic as a portion of the New York Times. But nonetheless, what he's trying to explain to you is that modern media or traditional media, I should say, has been cut down drastically. And, and, and to a point where he doesn't even necessarily recognize it, right? He said, I don't even recognize what modern newspapers look like nowadays. Anyways, I don't even know what they are. Don't even know what the concept of them is, right? He would go on to say that there's an interesting battle. I thought that was the, the, the intriguing portion of what he said. There was uh, an interesting battle going on between Georgia fans and the AJC. And he went on to say that he typically tends to favor the side of the media. But in this instance, doesn't necessarily do so. What does that tell you? Well, that tells you a history, a, a, a history buff in terms of investigative journalists, a guy who is not only like one of the biggest names in SEC media, but a guy who's like the journo of journos. He is by the book journalism. That is what Paul Feinbaum has always been. Have you ever looked at his show sheet? The guys that he brings onto his network 
almost nine times out of ten, they're like long-standing beat reporters. Dude, that's dudes that have been on the beat for 20, 25 years, or at least scattered across the network of beats, right? This is a dude that does it by the book and always has. And then the last quote was really just a nail in the coffin. Whatever used to be is no longer. This idea of altruistic journalism ceased to exist, okay? And if Paul Feinbaum can look at you in your face and tell you that, then there it is, right? There is no much, there, there's not much credence left in investigative journalism um, based off what we're looking at. Look, I don't have the numbers in front of me. I can't tell you exactly what the business of AJC looks like, nor do I have access to them, nor do I care to look at them. Um, but I know what dying dinosaurs look like, and AJC has been praying, and I mean praying, for something like this, a bone like this to chew on for quite some time. This was this is their last dish effort. This is what this is what a dying animal who is doing everything in it in his power to stay alive looks like. Um, in my opinion, um, it's a shame that in, in my opinion, it's my opinion, it is a shame that a company is allowed um, to attempt to slander every bit of public image um, of a man, like a guy like Kirby Smart. It's a shame that they're allowed to basically write a defamation article about a 16 year old kid and, and deem him as like a predator. Um, and, and one side of story so much that you make out a 16 year old kid who was proven and deemed innocent by, by, uh, police officers deemed him a predator. It's a shame that all of those things can happen. Um, it's also a shame that one side of the company can do this, can do all of this sensationalization and all this type of reporting while another side of the company can just pump red and black roses up your butt and be the only credentialed media member and outlet that is just like openly biased. But I don't know if y'all are ready for that conversation. Let's move on.